Turning Point Zone. Welcome to Soul Food. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a few minutes to, to log in, but, you know, today is the first month, uh, the first day of May, and I got this song in my spirit. I'm not a singer, but I'm going to sing this song because I just like it. Just join in with me. Ready? One, two, three. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. <laughs> when it's cold outside, I got the month of May. It's May! <laughs> now you can tell my talent is not singing. The Lord said we should stick to our talents. But I, I have that song in my head the whole time today. Because it's May 1st and it's spring and it's a beautiful month. But for those of you logging on, we're going to be talking about misunderstood scripture. So I did a poll asking you what you wanted me to talk about. And by 58% of you said you wanted me to talk about misunderstood scripture. So I was doing a lot of research over the weekend, just looking at stuff. I was talking to friends, asking people like, what are some of the scriptures that kind of irk you when people say, and it's not really what the Bible says, but you just hear it a lot. So we're going to jump right in, but I do want you to stick around till the end because I'm going to be doing a drawing. Um, for those of you who watched the last TPZ Table Talk Live that I did with Arlene Spensley, um, I did, for those of you who commented and shared, I put all your names in a little bowl. So I'm going to be picking out the, the person who's going to win a copy of her book. So make sure you stay tuned for that. <clears throat> okay, so jumping right in. I'm going to do the top five. Number one. Okay, this is, I hear this all the time. Money is the root of all evil. And actually, it's not, because the Bible actually says in 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So money itself is not evil. I mean, we all need money. Who doesn't need money here? Like, if I had hands, nobody would put their hands up. It's not money itself that is evil, because actually the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10.19 that Money answers everything. So we need money to do a lot of things, but it's the love of money. It's when you make money your God and you try to, uh, you, you, I mean, you, you just put it beyond anything else. So when people say money is the root of all evil, that is not actually what the Bible says. The Bible says the love of money is the, is the root of all evil. So let's not love money more than we do God, because the Bible says we can't serve both money and God. So that was my number one. Okay, number two. Uh, this one is a bit more serious. All things work together for good. And I know for me, when if something really bad has happened to you and somebody comes and just says that, there's a way that it makes you feel like, okay, like right now, that's probably not what you want to hear. And um, the Bible says, the actual scripture says in Romans 8.28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Now that part people don't usually put in. For the, go the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So um, in using the scripture, don't just use it as a platitude like, oh, you know, your child just died. Oh, but all things work together for good. Like, I don't think anybody wants to hear that. If, if you're going through a divorce or you're going through uh, a death or something really horrible is happening, even though the scripture, the context of the scripture is that all things will work, God will work all things together for the good of those who love him. But it doesn't mean that all things are good. And I know for me, I remember when I had, um, I had a miscarriage the second time and it was like, uh, I just remember just, just being so down about it. And I remember that scripture, but uh, in reading something, that's where I heard that not all things are good. What happens in those situations are not good. It's not good itself. Uh, but God turns it around for my good. He, he, work, he works evil for good. But he doesn't cause evil so that he could work it for your good, if that makes sense. And I read this quote from Rick Warren, and I just love it. Uh, he said, God is working good into our life. Whether the circumstances that come to you are to your liking or not. It's not about the circumstances. But the grace he's asking you to appropriate to your life so you can experience the good that is on the other side of the crucible of suffering. Isn't that a good quote? I just love it. So that's the second one. That's the second most misquoted for me. Okay, number three. Okay, anyone ever hear this one? 
God will never give you more than you can handle. Like who, if, if you've heard that, write it in, in the comment box and I'll check them below. God will never give you more than you can handle. It sounds good, right? Like, yeah, this is happening and I know I've, my house burned down and I lost my job and you know, all these things, but God will never give me more than uh, I can handle. But that's not true. He will give you more than you can handle. But the point I think, um, it's not actually even in the scripture, first of all, but the point is our dependency is supposed to be on God and not ourselves. Um, there's so many people in the Bible that he gave them more that, than they could handle. He asked Moses to go to Pharaoh and ask all the Israelites to come out of Egypt into the promised land. Like for one man, that's a lot to handle. And Jesus told the disciples, you know, to go into all the world and, you know, preach the gospel. That's a lot to handle. I don't know what God has asked you to do. And usually it's like, you know, when God says to do something, it's like, oh, wow, this is a lot. I cannot do it on my own. But he does that so that we can actually depend on him. So that scripture, I feel like <clears throat> it might be from um, 1 Corinthians ten thirteen, where it says, no temptation is overtaking you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. So in terms of temptation, he won't tempt you beyond what you could bear. But in things that you can handle... I think that God actually does give us more than we think we can handle. Okay, that's number three. Number four. Actually, before I look at number four, let me just look, make sure there are no questions. If you have questions or comments, or if you have stuff that, um, now I'm, I'm not texting, y'all. I'm looking in my phone to see <laughs> if there are comments, because people sometimes wonder. Um, if there's any of these misquoted scriptures that you've heard, make sure you write it in the comment box below. So these are just some of mine that I've come up with, um, that I hear, that I've heard a lot. So let me look in here. Okay. Okay. We've got some comments watching from Nigeria, watching from Kenya. Thank you for watching. Okay. Number four. This one, okay, this is this one says women should remain silent in the churches. This is from 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Now, how many of you have heard that one? And I know, uh, to be honest, for me, when I read this verse, I was like, hmm, like, okay, like, what does that mean? And I feel like a lot of people feel like it means women shouldn't preach, shouldn't sing, shouldn't lead. They should just be quiet and say nothing. And so... You know, I was meditating on the scripture, and I was like, Lord, what does this actually mean? So I dug in a little bit more. And you, every time you hear a scripture verse or something that sounds like the Bible, it, I would always encourage to look it up and also look up the context of what it means. So in this verse, it, the church setting back then was different. And really, the context of the verse was about maintaining order. Um, usually it was men that were the teachers and were usually um, having a teaching session. And the next verse also implies that the women were interrupting the flow. So if you're teaching something, how many of you have been in like school or something? And there's always this like one person that is just asking question after question after question. And you as a student, you can't get, you can't even learn anything because they keep asking. So in terms of this, it was like, uh, women should keep silent and not interrupt the flow. And in that scripture, around that context, there were other people in the chapter that uh, he said that should also be quiet. For example, it was like if uh, there are people who wanted to speak in tongues, they said do it one, one at a time and there needs to be an interpreter. And in the Bible it says that if there wasn't an interpreter, the quote says the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Um, and so in that context, it wasn't just the woman that was told to be quiet. So I feel like that's just my opinion. Now, this is, you know, just a disclaimer. I'm not proclaiming to know it all. But just in the interpretation of the scriptures, um, sometimes you shouldn't just take one scripture and then apply it to everything else. And um, Tanya, I was talking to um, my, uh, our makeup artist here, and she was saying that, you know, when Jesus tempted, uh, when Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, he was, he was throwing scriptures at him. He was saying, man should not live by bread alone. So, you know, uh, or if you actually, if you jump off this, this uh, cliff, uh, the Bible says that God will command his angels to, 
to catch you. Now that is in the scripture, but in that context, that was not used the right way. And Jesus said that we shouldn't tempt God. So I guess the point is when you hear a scripture, it doesn't just apply to everything. You have to really get the context. So that's number four. Okay, the fifth one. God only helps those who help themselves. Now, how many of you have heard that one? I, I hear it all the time. Actually, um, Tia, uh, our hairstylist, was telling me she, she hears it all the time. God only helps those who help themselves. So basically, if you don't help yourself, God won't help you. And that's not true. And that's not in the Bible. Actually, God provides for those who are helpless and needy. That's his, like, he specializes in helping us when we can't help ourselves. And one of my favorite scriptures says, Romans, it's Romans 5, 6, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 6 and 8. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless or helpless, Christ died for the ungodly. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were the most helpless, Christ died for you. He died for me. So really, he is the author of help. So those are my top five. And um, I know there are a lot more, but those are the ones I wanted to talk about today. And if you have stuff or misunderstood scriptures or quotes that you've heard, share it in the comment box below and we could discuss it. And I promise I will come back and read your comments as well. Okay, so right now... Um, I want to do the giveaway, so drum roll, please. <laughs> Actually, I have it over here. So in here are the names of the people who commented in on the video. So every time you watch our live, you never know what you might win. You never know if your name will be picked out of the hat and you'll win something special. Um, so, okay, I shouldn't look at it. All right, so this person is going to win the book. By Arlene Spensley, Chastity is for Lovers. Okay, Joanne Robles, you are the winner. So uh, we will be contacting you and you, we will send you the book for free because that's what we do on here on CPZ. So yes, I hope um, you learned something new. I hope you were enriched. I hope you had fun. I hope you remember it is May and that you get your get your song on if you know how to sing. Even if you don't know how to sing, just sing anyway. So, and one more thing, don't forget to we're uh, fill out a survey. We're doing a survey because we want to know what you want us to talk about. We want to know what kind of topics you want us to share, what guests to have on. So make sure you go to turningpointzone.com and uh, click this. There's a survey link on our website and just let us know. Give us your feedback. We always love hearing from you. So thank you for joining in on this live of Soul Food and have an awesome week. Bye.